Hello, Alan. Hey, Miff. How are you? All right. How are you going? Oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's... We're about to start homeschooling again on Monday. Oh, no. Here in Victoria. So, but that's all right. I've yeah. learnt, I think I've learnt things mm -hmm. from the last time. Yep. Um, what, have really you what have you learnt? <laughs> what have I learnt? Well, I've learnt not to be all up in my daughter's business all the time going, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Yeah. Because A, that would just annoy the shit out of me. Mm. Well, and B, that's not what teachers do. No. No, that's true. That's teachers true. Teachers are sort of roaming, making sure that everyone's doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think that's probably a good way to approach it because she's pretty independent. She's an independent spirit, isn't she? Yeah, she's a very independent spirit, Miff. Mm. Um, she's, yes. <laughs> I think that she will consciously uncouple from us in the next couple of years. <laughs> is that the term, consciously uncoupling? It is. That's very Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow and um, what's his name from Coldplay of you? Chris Martin. When I first heard that, I mean, and, and you know that, like, for instance, on Specs and Specs, it came out that the Callous song, My Milkshake Brings the Boys to the Yard, mm -hmm. I thought was about milkshakes. So I'm quite naive. The idea of conscious uncoupling always makes me think of taking the caravan mm. off the back of the car on and, holiday. And then popping a half a tennis ball over the top of it to say it's, it's not going to be used for a while. Yeah, Remember the half exactly. tennis ball? Yeah, yeah. And then someone dropping it on their hand or something like that and you're hearing your father or your uncle swear for the first time. Oh, and no. then... You can get out of the way. Get out of the way, you kids. You're in the way. We we can help. Get out of the way. I've got to admit, though, when that first came out, everyone laughed. Hilarious, hilarious. This is just the weirdest way to go about breaking up. Like, normally, a breakup is just full of hate and loathing. And now, it's kind of 10 years down the track since they have they were the first to consciously uncouple. <laughs> kind of makes sense. Is that is that weird of me that I'm coming around to some... Gwyneth-isms, like consciously uncoupling sounds quite nice compared to absolute deep loathing of the other person and, um, and, and we know that deep loathing doesn't get us anywhere. Consciously uncoupling, however, is quite sort of gentle. It is. It? And it consciously uncoupling. Kind of imp it implies that you're not going to hate that person and you'll treat them well even though you're not with them anymore, which is something I've never been able to achieve. No, conscious uncoupling is the equivalent, it appears to me, the relationship equivalent of quitting while you're ahead. <laughs> you're so right. You're so right. right. Calling it without letting it just die a horrible, nasty death. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Now, as I get older, which seems a far better way to break up than the other, which is, I'm never talking to you again. I never want to see your face. Don't contact it, me. I hate you. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's why they came up, I don't know where they came up with the term conscious uncoupling, mm. but it, it, when you use the term breakup, it just sounds, just sounds awful. I know, but like, I, I marvel at those people that can go, like, I just, when you're in that, you know, the depths of breakups, all you can think of, I can't think of anything beyond what it is, you know, the fact that they probably sat down, had a meeting and went, what can we call this new term of breakup that doesn't sound like breakup? And then, you know, they would have had a discussion with their PR people and amazing. Like, I'm always astounded by those people that can just have their shit together like that. It would make, it would make normal breakups easier if you did have PR people for, like, hmm. just normal ones. Yeah. So you could issue a release with your side of the story on it. That's right. And because um, everyone takes a side. That's true. And the problem is, if people ever get back together after they're broken up, yeah, the people who took the other person's side now have to try and be friends with the person that they badmouthed the whole time again. That's right. And if you want to get really, really nitpicky, you can say, contact my PR if you'd like to talk to me yeah. ever again. Yeah. I love that. Exactly. You see, I've got a small dog here. She's 
joining me. Oh, God, again. she's getting bigger every day. No, I know. I know. Yeah. I don't know what to do, Alan. She's she's going beyond my realms of experience when it comes to dog training and the dog whisperer that I had engaged to help with some training because of COVID. It's all shut down, so it's back to me again. And um, I feel no. like I feel like that it's going too far the other way. You know, like things are just just happening, and yeah, and, and the discipline's out the other end. So. God, I know. Um, have you been having a lot of? I know this is this is apropos nothing. Have you been having a lot of takeaway since lockdown? Yeah, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> what are you having tonight? Um, well, I've discovered a new place nearby. I've been going relatively healthy for, with the takeaway bowls. You know how everything's in bowls now because it always was in bowls, but they're just giving it a name. Because when did you? You know, it's. It's ridiculous, um, but there's sort of healthy bowls that I've discovered on a, on a delivery service that I've been trying each different bowl each night this week because I can't be bothered. I don't know what's happened. Last time I did, oh, you know, I was cooking pasta and I was trying new things. I was making pasta, like being really into it. And this time I'm like, I get to dinner time, I'm like, nah, can't, I'm not, I don't even want to think about it. What so are these think? like bowls that have like, Edamame and kale and mm, health. Bar and health. Yeah, with health. Loads of mayonnaise. Yeah. So, you know, then oh, with, oh, okay. I was going to say with like a, a spicy tahini dressing. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, and mayonnaise. So, you know, it's, 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 all, it's all bullshit. Have you been doing the same? Have you been ordering? No, no. I've been cooking. Have like, you? I've, I've got a chicken on at the moment that I'll pull to bits and make a um, udon noodle chicken udon noodle salad with a peanut sauce oh you're good Come i'm on. into it but speaking of chicken yeah kfc i reckon oh. kfc has single-handedly caused <laughs> the uptick in cases of covid in victoria i agree it's that or their marketing team is actually done the best job of anyone in this entire crisis because every time they mention KFC on someone breaking lockdown rules, which was there was the party, the yep. KFC party, tw how much money worth of twenty six thousand dollars or something? Who buys that much? I mean, but they bought an extraordinary amount of KFC, and that's how they got caught in the first mm. place. Yeah, and then the other one yesterday that's just come up was. The guy who refused to leave the KFC restaurant because he wanted to finish his chicken meal, which I wholeheartedly endorse, by the way. You can't eat that stuff on the move. It's too greasy. So I just reckon it's either KFC have caused it or they've got the best PR team on the case. And it's because everyone's talking about KFC today. Everyone. I know. It, it is a really weird thing that, like, Ordering so much KFC <laughs> is going to get you noticed. It's like, I, I don't know, it, it's, it seems to be the cocaine of lockdown. It is. Like, people are just desperate for it and they'll do anything to get KFC. In fact, so much so that they'll have a party, a KFC party. I've never been to one of these parties before, but I'm sure I'll get invited to one after this. You, what, you, what happens at a KFC party, Miff? It is that you throw your keys into a bucket of KFC mm. and at the end, no one can get their keys out because they're too greasy <laughs> and everyone has to walk home. So it's a sort of, it's a designated driver key party. Oh. And then you oh. go back the next day and there's, all your keys are just stuck together. <laughs> In like, you know, a King Rat style, like they've all intertwined and there's just one giant key Oh. Go into the car park and press one bit and everyone's cars open up. Ugh. Can you just, oh, I'm just, um, imagine getting it there, getting yeah. it to the party. Oh, you'd need a ute for all those buckets. Like, <laughs> how much did they spend? I'm intrigued. I'm going to look this up. And the potato and gravy. Oh, oh delicious. <laughs> this is, now, that's interesting because yeah. I was never a potato and gravy fan. But 
almost everyone I know, when you mention KFC, they say, oh, potato and gravy. And I say, what did, do you do anything specific with it? Yeah, you dip chips in it. And you go, mm -hmm. oh, so two sorts of potato and gravy. Yeah, yeah, double up on those carbs. And, yeah. just, and then grip it in lard, what is essentially lard. Because gravy is animal fat, isn't it? Um, oh, I, I suppose, yeah, you get it from squeezing cows. <laughs> like, grab them around the middle, squeeze them, and out their nostrils comes gravy. Oh, oh God, I'm looking it up. They, they got fined $26,000 for the KFC meals, but they ordered, two people ordered 20 meals, a 20 meal deal. Like, what does that say? Does that say I'm going home to eat all of this? Or does it say yeah. I am sharing it with 20 other people? But what happened? Did someone at the KFC, like, knock them out? Is there now a button yeah. At, yeah. at takeaway places where if someone orders, so two people walk in, they yeah. order 20 meals, and someone just presses a little button, and the cops the go, counter. takeaway yeah. alert. <laughs> like in the bank when there's a bank robbery. Yes, that's exactly it. And suddenly the tactical response unit or whatever it's called. Wheel, 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 wheel. Are there. And imagine you're just like, it, it's like um, dog day afternoon. They're coming out holding onto all these meals and suddenly there's just guns trained on them. And they're like, it's a personal use. <laughs> oh my God. We're not dealing. KF is the, is, yeah, it is. It's the... It's the drug of COVID. It really is. And so, I mean, if we, if Victoria goes into stage four lockdown, mm. there's no KFC. What? No, there's no takeaways. Can't, we can't dial in or anything? No, like... I don't think so. That's what, in, in New Zealand, there was no takeaways. Oh, so everyone was cooking at home. Oh, God. Yeah, so get those <laughs> mayonnaise slathered bowls in while you can. I'm going to. Yeah. Then it'll be, what, it's going to be, sorry, I've got all my contents of my cupboard next to me, baked beans and noodles, because um, my cupboard's broke, my pantry broke, Alan. Wait, but how, did, how does your pantry break? Oh, it's one of those, you know, those shelving units that have little screws and it sits on top of the screws? Yeah. The screws have all started falling out. I don't know what's happened. Maybe my house is moving or something. Um, so oh, the, one of the shelves fell down and everything fell with it, which was always fun. I think, uh, it's, I think it's the food making a cry for help. They're seeing you bringing these bowls in from outside and they're going, but what about us? We're in the pantry myth. All you have to do is walk over and open the door and there we are. And they've all got together and gone, we'll show her and just thrown themselves out. They've gone like that. They've yeah. stomped on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. And so suddenly there's, there's just food pouring out of the pantry and you're going, my house is moving. And they're still. going, oh, she still doesn't get it. Oh. We just want her to eat us. Oh, you're so right. <laughs> Everyone apart from the mayonnaise, which is just going, oh, no, she's got another bowl. Oh. Well, she's yeah. going to get a tablespoon of and it's going to be all over it yeah that's right but you know what something that did fall out that i'd forgotten about that i was absolutely addicted to when i lived overseas you know how like some people get tin tams and vegemite and i lived in london for nearly two years do you know what i ordered what? for my friends to bring me and it was like they were opening up a suitcase of you know some of like contraband or something um because you couldn't get these in the uk and i, I must have been i haven't even eaten this since i've been back this is pretty close to out of date, but I need it. For some reason, that's all I wanted. <laughs> no! Oh, that stuff is so great. Continental pasta and sauce. Although this is sour cream and chives. I'm sure it's just as good as the um, fettuccine Alfredo that oh. I use. <laughs> we just add milk and butter. How disgusting. Yeah. But yeah, I just, people would just like, bring over a suitcase, open it up. It was like in Pulp Fiction, you know, when he opens it up and the gold. <laughs> oh, and I was like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And do you eat it on its own or do you eat it like the serving suggestions? As oh, never as a serving suggestion. Sometimes I'll do two in one bowl. So it's just a massive bowl of it. Um, yeah, but I haven't had that since I've been back. What, had, what was that about? Was it because I couldn't have it? 
so I wanted it. Maybe. I think that's what happens. Yeah, I, I don't even like milk. You don't even like milk? No. I don't know what it was. What was I craving, Alan? What was my food, what was my food telling me then? <laughs> you were addicted to a thing that had milk and butter in it and mm. let's be honest, stuff that no one really knows what it is. It's beyond KFC's 11 Secret Herbs and Spices. Like there's stuff in there that I've never heard of. How many things have numbers after them on the back of the ingredients bit? Pretty much all of them. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's no actual food in there either. Right. Like everything's a flour or a powder or a liquid. Yeah. There's no real food. Even the no onion real. is a powder. See, see, there's a brand. No real food. <laughs> Students would love it. Oh, they would. Hey, now, have you watched The Babysitter's Club on Netflix? No, I haven't. Oh, I my haven't. God. Get involved. Is it good? Because oh. I never read it as a kid, so it, it sort of, it was the wrong generation for me. I think it was a bit younger. Yeah. So is it good? Is it, is it, like, switched on as all these new young dramas are? Look, I just thought it was beautiful. I thought the characters were really great. It was really centred around the friendship of the young women, yep. a couple of boys in it. And the boys are really funny because the boys were like, I think they're like 12 and 13, mm. the girls. And the boys were exactly like 12, you know, in, in a lot of dramas, the 12 and 13 year old boys were a bit, hey, check yeah. me out. Look, these were like actual 12 and 13 year old boys who were a bit like, oh, <laughs> girls. Can I, oh, I'm close to some girls. <laughs> Oh, that's gorgeous. So they weren't really acting. They were just feeling uncomfortable. As yeah, yeah, just do. feeling really uncomfortable and getting sensations in new areas that <laughs> they understand. New areas. No one needs to hear about new areas. Oh, look, you know, a boy's pants after about 11 is the whole there be dragons. <laughs> oh, no. Just, it's yet to be explored. Um, <gasps> but the... the the friendship between the girls is just so lovely. Oh, it's, that's awesome. It's really Did you great. Watch Daisy? Yeah, yeah. Well, the whole family watched it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the whole family. That makes us sound like the Waltons. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, John boy. Yeah. <laughs> the three of us. Um, oh, I remember school camp. I mean, school camp was just, we got in so much trouble because someone would say, Good night, John Boy. And then, and then all was the people in the door would be, Good night, Mary Ellen. <laughs> Good night, Grandpa. Good night. And then one of the teachers would come in and go, You're all going to be out of here. Yeah. And you have wait. to get out in your Jimmy Jams. Yeah. And some of them would go, Good night, Grandma. And then it would just start again. <laughs> and it was just, it was, no, oh, it was great. But the Babysitter's Club mm -hmm. is, it's just lovely. Okay, that's a good recommendation. I'll tell you, um, so how old is it? What's the age group that it's aimed at? Well, look, I think probably uh, nine, eight plus. Mm. I don't yeah. really know. Yeah. I mean, I liked it. Yeah. I mean... Any age then. Any age. That's it. Any age. It's well, like on certain board games from nine to 99. <laughs> yeah, from nine to ninety-nine, you'll still want to absolutely probably kill the person you're playing opposite. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine playing a, like Monopoly against a ninety-nine-year-old? No. I mean, it goes on long enough as it is. Let oh. alone a person go. No, wait a minute. Have I got enough money? Just let me check here. Don't. Um, I watched a kids show too. That well, not really kids, young teenagers, and I, I highly recommend it too. Never have I ever. Have you heard about it? No. Mindy Kaling, who's an amazing um, television star um, in America, she's got her own show, The Mindy Mindy Project. But she has done this show, and it's it's about. Uh, a young girl, so it's more probably teenagers, but it's it's a young girl who is growing up in America and she's also dealing with her Indian heritage. And it's super contemporary and it's unreal. And John McEnroe does the voiceovers. You know how there's like a smart voiceover quite often in these shows and sometimes it can be a bit kind of twee. He does the voiceover in the show, like does the narration. And it's it's just really good. It's really fun, really good, really clever. 
And um, I was amazed that I could watch a teen show like that or aimed at teens and it was so beautifully put together. Kids Kelly blows my mind. What did we have? I Nothing. Love, the goodies. I love, I love John <laughs> McEnroe. It's like Ron Howard does the voiceover in Arrested Development. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what was it called again? It's called Never Have I Ever. Never Have I Ever. Mm-hmm. Well, look, while we're on recommendations, I found this new band called Power Bottom. And it's spelled, I love that name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's spelled P-W-R. Uh, Her, space, power. Yeah, B-T-T-M. Yep. And it's queer punk. Amazing. Yeah, it, it's really... Where are they from? Uh, I think the States, um, and it's really, it's just great. Mm. It's really great. It's, it, it harks back to, you know, New York Dolls, Ramones, some things like that, but it's just really, it's interesting. It's immediate. The subject matter is really fascinating and not the sort of thing that is n- n- normally in punk music. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, power bottom. Love it. Come look it up. Thank you. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, it's, I love it. Up recommending lots of things. Yeah. Yeah. That's unreal. I haven't got any music recommendations at the moment, but um, television, I'm all over it. Well, I'm reading a book called The Giant's House, which is about, it's a love story between a librarian and the world's tallest man. Oh, yeah, it's it's really interesting. It's quite bleak. Mm. Is it it based on the real world's tallest man, or is it like no? Oh no, I don't think so. But it is a bit bleak. But it's bleak in that way where you're standing on a beach in winter, and it you it's cold and it's gusty, but it's still really beautiful. Mm. Mm. That's how I would describe this book. Oh, what's it called again? The Giant's House. The Giant's House. How yeah. did you get onto that? Um, oh, I don't know. I was looking for books. I, I, I just, I have a lot of time on my hands, so I go down these rabbit holes. Yeah. Like, and, and just find these books and music and, you know, I found Power Bottom through one of the members in it who has gone solo has only appeared to release one record, one single at all. Mm. That's how solo he's gone. <laughs> and so I just, I just find these things. I, I, I really enjoy finding new things. I know a lot of people have been listening during this time to older stuff. And, mm. um, and all, there's also a podcast called All Ears. Yeah, what's that? It's made from Melbourne. And it's all about music, but like it, the ways music affects or affects different people or is used in different ways. For instance, the first one is about soundtracks in operating theatres. So the anaesthetist op- often soundtracks the operation. Was that the anaesthetist then soundtracking our operation? Uh, that's our. Uh, um, uh, smoke detector. <laughs> oh no! So there's one of the advantages of takeaway. Yeah. When your bowl comes round, yeah, the smoke detector doesn't go off. No, that's true. What were you cooking? That is that your chicken smoking? Yeah, but it shouldn't. Like, I just don't understand what happened there. Mm. Um. It's like it's not like the oven's on fire. No. Like that. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> Hit it with the stick, Alan. Okay, that's just gonna that's just gonna keep on happening. Is it? Oh, that's all right. Um, I I when I was in a house once and I, it was just me in there and um, my housemate was away for ages. I had a similar problem and it just kept going off like on the hour every hour and I couldn't reach it because I was um, too short and I it wasn't something you could poke with a stick because it was up too high. 
Yeah. And um, so I just, I got used to it after a while. <laughs> it was like, oh, because I had to wait for, I didn't know the neighbours to ask them to help. So I, I was stuck. It just was like, Beep! every hour on the hour through the night. But by the end, I was like, oh, well, it's fine. <laughs> it was like having a baby. Yeah, 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 never sleep. Never yeah, sleep. once an hour it would wake you up. Sure, I pulled out my eyeballs, but no, I was, I was fine. <laughs> I, was, I was fine with it after all. It's amazing what you can deal with when you, it's how you tell yourself what's okay and what's not, isn't it? Like, I think, yeah. like sometimes, because I've got tinnitus, which is constant ringing. And if I, if I really thought about it, I'd get sad and it would drive me a bit mad. But if you sort of try not to notice it, I'm not saying it's a good thing. Like it does make me sad sometimes. But, um, yeah, it's, you just go, oh, well, that's how it is. And <laughs> you just have to go, well, I don't want to go mad because of it. Um, that's true. I like that. I, I'm very bad at that. I get really obsessed by things and they start to just, they just toil around in my brain and I just get more and more in a knot. Yeah, well, see, now I'm thinking about it. I can hear it and it's really loud. Oh, God. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, that wasn't my tinnitus that was going off before. <laughs> that would be really unfortunate. And imagine if you'd listen to so much music that oh. occasionally your ear just started going, beep, beep. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> it would kill you. Yeah. It would well, kill look, um, go and watch the Babysitter's Club. And what was that one you recommended? Oh, never have I ever. Never have I ever. Yeah. Okay. Great sort of teen adult drama. It's excellent. Yeah. Really cute. Really well, cute. I've got to go and get the chicken out of the oven. You do, actually. You've got to go and save your house from burning down by the sound of it. Yeah, I, I actually do by the sound uh, of it. So. What, do you, what do you stuff your chicken with before I... Uh, before oh, I, I chop a head of garlic in half and uh, put that in half a lemon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and just really... Shove it in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. You just well, there we go. Back to the bird again. The dirty bird. Yeah. Bloody. Oh, chickens are. Yeah. Something's going to have to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Deep fried chicken. It's going to be the death of us. Yeah, it will be. It is. It's the cause. Of the covi and and that's it. We can just blame the dirty, dirty bird for spreading itself around. Just got this image of two guys walking out with ten meals each in their arms. Probably and happened many, the, many times. Probably thing, usually goes unnoticed. I would imagine. But think, <laughs> in under these circumstances, no one would go. That appears to be irregular. Hmm. Hmm. The guy not willing to leave. I love it. Leave, I, meal. I haven't wiped my hands with the moist towelette. I can't leave. <laughs> you know those KF oh, moist yeah. towelettes? Those and they're tiny, towelettes. like it's like washing with a tiny little, like it just doesn't do any of the job that you need it to do. But no. it, it's, it masquerades as some sort of cleaning aid. But yeah. It looked like what you would put over a mouse after the mouse had finished a marathon. <laughs> or died. Or died, yes. <laughs> Like, it died under mysterious circumstances and you'd cover it with that until the coroner arrived? Just one little foot at the end. Oh, mm. I know, I agree. Well, and so... Don't look, get chicken. Don't get chicken. And if you do, bring your own moist towelette. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we're out. See ya. Bye, lovely.